are. How can we be live? Oh, we can be live. I guess I can turn on my camera. There we go. Good evening, everybody. It looks like, um, yet again, YouTube is not being friendly to me. So we're going to just forego doing anything on YouTube tonight. And I'll try to upload this uh, as quickly as possible so that we're ready to go for, uh, well, at least we have it up there. But um, let's see. Uh, tonight's topic is on moving heads. And I am grabbing my moving head layout, moving it down here to the main screen, and sharing. Um. If you have, uh, let me let me get rid of this. There we go. If you have a uh, uh, a set of moving heads, uh, tonight is going to be an interesting kind of a deep dive into. Well, I don't want to say deep dive, but it's a it's a dive into kind of fixing some models that maybe not fixing models, but fixing uh, the effects that whenever you are mapping from moving head sequences that are not the same moving head that you have. Um, there's some anomalies that have uh, occurred and happened and so forth. And um, what uh, one of the things that led us to today's uh, uh, webinar and our specifically specifically our uh, dive into the topic um, has been uh, a challenge that one of our uh, clients has, has uh, picked up some sequences. They apparently had uh, the same moving head that we were using, but we later found out that unfortunately the moving heads that they got are a different version uh, made by the same manufacturer. And they're being sold as the same item, but they're no, they're not the same model. And so, importing and mapping, whenever a model is the, exactly the same as the model that you're mapping from, you, it should be a rather simple one-for-one -one mapping. In in other words, if you have a PPD wreath and we sequence on the PPD wreath, and you map the group effects from our PPD wreath into your PPD wreath with the same groups, they should go together perfectly. They should work. And um, uh, the same would be said for moving heads. If you have, uh, we use the Dominar uh, moving head uh, lamp series from uh, Matos Designs. And uh, they're a 14 channel version of a moving head. And we have them programmed in the layout. We've been doing them now for going on two years pretty soon. And so we chose the Domineers because they, they seem to work really, really well. We've used them commercially, we've used them residentially, and we haven't had uh, any challenges with them. And that's not saying that you should go out and run run out and get them. They're, they're, they're more of a professional line. Uh, so with that being said, some of the ones that you might be using are ones from our uh, other affiliate, say, uh, Minor Mendoza, who has, a, uh, who has them and he has his own uh, moving heads from your Pixel store. So uh, more on that, Rob has a special for you guys tonight. So if you stay tuned, you're going to learn about that. Uh, but uh, but the, the, the idea is, is that if you have the same model, everything should map over. Well, unfortunately, uh, the Dominars have uh, had a change to them uh, in their, I guess, their third release or second release or whatever. And uh, we didn't realize that this was happening. We had no idea that the model had changed. We had no idea because, you know, quite frankly, we, we can't keep buying moving heads. They're darn expensive. Um, the Domineers are uh, roughly around the price tag of 1700 bucks to $2,000, somewhere in that price range. They're not a cheap moving head. They're a professional grade of moving head. And uh, with that being said, uh, whenever you map from them and they change a model, uh, then everything might be kind of skewed or kind of off off kilter. So what we did was last week we got an email uh, that that it, it, from a, a gentleman, and I'm going to butcher his last name because he has a fantastic last name, but his name's Don. And Don reached out to us and he was pulling his hair out over mapping the, his version of the moving heads from our version of the Domineer moving heads. And so where we found ourselves was we had to come up with a way 
to help him um, begin to fix the the error or the difference between the two moving heads. So where we'll start is um, his uh, Dominar uh, moving head, whenever he had the model imported into his layout, it was turned sideways, sort of like this. And it was pointed off to the left, we'll say. And um, whenever he got down to the nuts and bolts of it, we learned that uh, his degree of rotation and his pan orientation were different than ours was. And so Rob spent probably an hour or two in Zoom trying to diagnose this. He pulled me in and, uh, you know, I, I said this, I've said this a number of times. Uh, I never had to map moving heads. I've never had to do that because I've always just sequenced on the moving heads for our clients. So it's, it's sometimes it's challenging for me to answer questions because there's situations that I just never have to uh, experience. But yet whenever Robert was faced with this, he, he jumped in and he started parsing out what was going on. So what, what they did was they found out that there's some things that it, you need to learn whenever you're mapping from a specific vendor into your specific moving heads. So it's a good idea to open up the sequence that you that you purchased or downloaded or bought or was given to you, open it up in the user's layout. And then in one screen compare, uh, for example, click on their version of the model and then have your model opened up on another screen in another instance of X lights. And, uh, and that's a good way for you to, now I don't have a moving head over here, but if you had two instances of X lights, you could have, two of them side by side, right? And what 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 you would experience is, is you, you could click on that moving head on your layout versus their layout, and you'd be able to go down through and verify all of those settings that are on your moving head versus their moving head. So this is rather important. Now I have um, modified the moving head that we have, uh, the original um, moving heads that we have been using for the past almost two years. Uh, I modified one of them to mimic the similarity of the moving head that Dawn had. And I want to show you the fix that we came up with. And the hope is, is that we can walk you through how to do this. Number one, number two, document that we can walk you through it so that if your moving head is even more different than what you see in front of you, or it's opposite, or it's somehow it's not the same as what we're demonstrating, that you can kind of parse it out for yourself to take the time to go through this. But but what we found is, is that it was very, it, it wasn't that hard once we understood what the fix was. And then we also learned that in some of the most recent releases, there are some exciting additions in X lights and um, the, the adjust effects uh, effect is now available in X lights. And we're going to do the fix originally as we learned how to do it after we did some research and after we jumped in and, and did some of our own little calculations and stuff, but we also found a more modern way to kind of fix this without having, uh, without having to do as much. But I'm, I'm going to walk you through that today. So uh, hopefully you guys are all ready. Um, and that's uh, enough of an opening or an intro that uh, we can go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to say is, is that this is, this is the default setting to the Dominar uh, moving heads that we've been using since day one. Uh, we have never changed them. We've never moved them. However, they imported into our layout. This is how we've always just let them sit there. Um, other vendors may have their moving heads turned sideways and they're pointed down or whatever. They have a specific start position. And so they, they change it so that it's there. And uh, what I recommend is that you look at yours and then you look at ours, obviously, as I said earlier. Now, the first instance here is that we can see is there's something going on with the pan, the, the head's in a different direction. So our pan orientation is set at what, what, is, what is numbered in here. And I, again, I don't know all, I don't understand all of the little dynamics of, of all the models, but I know that ours is at 90. This one here is set at 180 degree or 180 as the or the pan orientation. So if I went and put this at 90 degrees, you'll see what happens. It comes right back to the front. But at 180 degrees, 
that's the way theirs is set up. That's how their model was created, and that's how that person needs to sequence it. Then you have another difference, which is the pan degree of rotation. And it, with the pan degree of rotation, whatever this means, the de degree it, it has, I believe this has a degree of four hundred and uh, five hundred and forty degrees that it can that it can turn from one end of the spectrum to another. Whenever you give it a value of one to 255 on the DMX scale. So if we look at this, it's actually reversed. It's a negative. It's a negative 540. So there is no way that I personally or any other sequencer, you, you look at uh, Showstoppers or um, Barry over uh, sequence solutions or, or um, uh, Heath and, and, and his wife, Teresa over at, at uh, fairy pixel dust that they, and they do moving heads too. Uh, there's no way that we are ever going to get it hundred percent right for everybody because moving heads are an advanced item in your display. They're not a, they're not a, I don't want to say they're not for a beginner, but for somebody who's new to, to moving heads, they're going to make you scratch your head a little bit because, Every vendor's is different. There's no one, and and that at any time that vendor may receive a different stock, and the the supplier has supplied them with something that is updated or new, and they may not know themselves. And us as a sequencer, we're not going to know either. So, uh, with that being said, there's the differences between the two, and that's what we found when we sat there and we calculated some of these out. So that pan degree of orientation was important to us and the pan orientation, uh, or I'm sorry, the pan degree of rotation and the pan orientation, excuse me. So with that being said, this is this is kind of what was going on whenever, now I got to bring in the moving head or the uh, preview here. Let's see. There it is. Bring it over. Okay. So here is here is the moving head. This is just um, th this is just the default setting of the exact same effect. So what we did, what what Robert and I did was we 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 kind of tried to find the value. Uh, we put we took the two mo uh, the the same effect on both models, and we well actually Rob did most of the work here. He 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 set just a basic set of effects. And in this instance, we took um, on the moving head one. Now, the one on the left is the one that's skewed, and the one uh, on the right that's moving is the one that is the uh, default. So if I if I just delete this off of here and I just look at this one specific effect right here, all we're doing here is we, we're just using the pan and going from a value of DMX84 to DMX164. Or I'm sorry, excuse me, DMX168, then back to DMX84. And that's where this pan is coming from. Now, if I copy and paste this into this model, which has the same channel settings, because of those differences in the pan degree of rotation and the pan orientation, they're going in opposite directions. They're, one's going clockwise and the other's going counterclockwise to each other. And and they're, they seem to be pointed at the right direction, but but their degree is completely off. So what we had to do is we had to find how much it was off. And so what we did was we just took the basic on a DMX on effect and we turned on the dimmer. And we set them at their at the at the default DMX location, whatever that DMX default was. And then we went over to the pan slider and we tried to match up exactly where what number exactly fits so that they look very, very close. So uh, what we kind of come up with was somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 or 41, 42. Well, 42 looks pretty close. I, I I did 43. 43 to me looks a little bit more over to the right than the other. So I went back to 42. And this was important because we're going to use this number as we go forward. And you're going to see why this number is helpful. And it, whenever we go back here, let's go back here. And we have these, we have the same effect from the first column here, the pan value curve that I set up earlier. This is the exact same thing. But now what we have to do is we have to account for that value being offset by 42 in DMX. So let's go in and we're going to remap the channels. Now, what you have to imagine is, is that we have an entire moving head sequence here. 
and all of the degrees of uh, uh, of the uh, excuse me, uh, did I say forty two on the focus? Oops, uh, it shouldn't be like that. Um, forty two, forty two was on the pan. I think that's what I said. Yeah, forty two was on the pan. Don't know why I typed that in there. But in, in any event, what we have to do is we have to remap these channels. And if you were to right click model and whoop, select effects, that'll select every effect in that set of rows for that model. So again, models, right click model and select effects. So what you can do now is you can do a right click bulk edit. And that's what you would be doing if you had this degree of rotation off. We're going to go and we're going to give this an offset now, I'm not going to do this on all of them. I don't want to do a bulk because I'm doing the demo here. But you have to imagine that this is what you have to do at the at the full level of all of your effects that are on your sequence because all of your effects are affected by it. So just to make this one effect work, just to make this one effect work, I want to walk you through it step by step. So what we'll do is we'll right-click, bulk edit, under remap channels, and we'll look at the exact channel number that we're going to make the change on. The exact channel number is, well, here's one through 10, 11 through 20, one through 10. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pan is on the ninth channel. Fine pan is on the 10th. It's at the bottom of the list. We know this if we change this here, I'll show you this real quick. If you go to, if you go to the second tab here, see how this says channel 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's because these all have titles that are added to them. And whenever you don't see them, they're actually numbered. But that's how we're, this is how we're coming up with the channel number that you need to edit because it doesn't say pan on it. So again, hover over top of this, hit right, uh, right click on your mouse and then hit bulk edit. And then we're going to do it because that's channel nine. We'll go to channel nine here. And we're going to throw that number 42 into our offset. So as soon as we do that, and this could be a bulk edit on your entire sequence, look what happens. Absolutely everything in here, everything in this moving head effect is doing exactly the opposite of what the other one is doing. So it's so we made some headway here. So now basically the next step is now that we have it doing that, now that we have it doing that, um, I guess I need to do another quick bulk edit channel here and go back to here to 42, 42, there we go. Is that right? Oh wait, remap channel. I'm pretty sure I did that, didn't I? There we go. Okay. So that would that would match what those are doing, which is what I wanted. And now what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the invert box that's available in X Lights. And as soon as we do, this was the fix that we came up with. Now this took a little while for us to figure out because it wasn't exactly apparent what you had to do in X Lights in order to account for this difference uh, that was necessary. Um, another thing that we learned that we might have to do was we also might have to go back over here and change the tilt, and the tilt may need an inversion as well. So beware. You may need that tilt, you, your degree of rotation or your degree of tilt. All of that information is going to be determined by these numbers that are over here. And in this instance, it was only affected by the pan and degree of rotation. It wasn't a tilt orientation and it wasn't a degree, a tilt degree of rotation. So we didn't have to uh, make so any- With that oh. being said, if you look at the pan degree of rotation, it's 540 degrees. If that number is negative 540, you must invert the pan and the tilt to make that number work. Which is exactly why we added this box in, because if you don't make that change, then your degree of rotation may be reversed of what it, what the actual value was. So that was the that was basically the fix that that we were able to work through and this took how long did how long were you on zoom with them with him rob for quite a bit 
Yeah, because I had to reverse engineer everything to figure out what was going on with the head. Because um, the negative 540 and the 540 was throwing me off. But then once I realized that once you inverted the pan, you had the same moving head, but one was moving clockwise and one was moving counterclockwise. Then when you inverted the tilt, they would both move the same clockwise or counterclockwise together. So th then we went a little further. And um, was it Timothy that, that mentioned it on Facebook whenever, because you, yes. Rob, Rob was rather excited. Um, I was excited too, because like, I mean, he, I, they, he spent at least an hour and a half going through this, beating his head off the wall and he pulled me in. And um, when, when Rob said, this is what we need to talk about this week for our uh, PPD webinar. And what he brought up uh, on top of that was he said he said so he posted in the group he posted in the PPU Facebook group and and the goal was to get you guys got kind of excited about hey we we actually have something that I think a lot of people really could use uh, uh, some knowledge on and when he posted that Timothy I can't remember his last name uh, mentioned he says oh are you going to go over the new uh, uh, adjust effect that is in X lights or something to that effect and. Um, Rob and I looked at each other and we're like, oh, must be something new. They added X lights that we don't we don't know about. So Rob and I spent some time looking at the fix that we did last week or that he rather did last week. And we kind of reworked the exact same problem uh, here in in this in using the new effect. So the new effect, if you're not aware of it, it's right here. It is a physical effect. And um it, through the magic of through the magic of, of canvas mode and uh, uh, another effect, uh, you're able to make changes in X lights just by using the effect. So yes, Alex, thank you. Timothy Grinnell um, is the one who who, who mentioned it. Uh, so uh, what I wanted to show was exactly the same thing, the exact same issue, uh, and uh, the exact same fix that we that we could come up with. And utilize this in your sequence where now you're just inserting layers above over top of all of your effects without having to do anything bulk edit. So if I click on this, this effect here, this is exactly the same place that we started from. If I click on this one, this is exactly the same effect. I duplicated it from the beginning. And the first thing that we did was we wanted to solve or make this uh, have the solution of adjust the values so that we get this bouncing back and forth. And the way that we accomplished that was... Under the adjust effect, if you drop use the drop down and use adjust by value, we knew what our value was that we wanted to change, and that was 42. There was there's no need to go in, there was no need to right click and remap channels bulk edit, and there was no need to go in here to this channel I I into here because once you go in here and you make that change, it doesn't stay there. It it it, it, it in, in other words, in other words, if I come over here. These have already been bulk edited. If I go back in here, bulk edit, look, there's no there's no view where it shows you that that degree uh, that offset of 42 has been applied. It's not it's not staying with that effect, so you don't know. And so my question was, and, and I tried to see if it worked whenever I had uh, exported and imported it in a sequence, and I couldn't tell uh, that that had an adjustment had been made. So if you make it and then you make it again, you're going to throw it off even more. So this is what's nice about the adjust effect is now you can tell for sure that here's the adjustment I made, adjust the value by 42. If we go back to zero, look what happens. Boom. It goes exactly back to the way it was. So, but we want to, we want to adjust it by 42. So that's what we did. We let the uh, nth channel be one. We set our starting channel at nine and nine is important again, because we are, once again, we're working with a DMX channel that has a value that goes zero to 255. So that's important to know. And, um, I, I think I, I, we were messing around with doing the count here earlier, and I, I really uh, – this this is actually like a really new effect. Like there really isn't a lot of information on this. So we did a lot of kind of playing with this today, and we don't know everything about this, but I'm sure we're going to learn more as we go along. So the other nice thing is about, the, uh, about this effect now is we've got pretty much a one-for-one one here, whereas we were able to do that here. So we got this bounce back and forth. And they they're mirror opposites of each other at this point. So we're at this stage in 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 the um, uh, in the uh, overall scheme of things, right? 
So now what we did was we ended up putting another adjust effect over top of this. Now these are layered and you can see via the lender, uh, the, 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 the layer blending here, how we have canvas mode here and it's, it's checked. And what that means is that it's basically, it's taking whatever's below it, include it in the change and, and make those values, combine those values, uh, whether that, whether that's the case or not, that's just the way in my head that I think about it working. Um, and then all we did was we hit the reverse, we hit the reverse adjustment on here to reverse the values. Now, if you remember, we did the invert for the checkboxes on both the tilt and we did the invert on the pan, and that was through the DMX effect. But here, if we do reverse, it's automatically doing that on the ninth. Now, I did count two, and it seems that doing it on count two, it's also affected the 11th channel, which the top one here would be the 11th. And it looks like it's inverted both of them. So your mileage may vary. This might be very well what you need to do. But if this doesn't work, you maybe uh, if that's one, I mean, it's, it's still doing it. Do it every month on the ninth. I mean, it's still doing, it's doing the inverted. But this may be exactly what it is that you need to do. And so I... I I, I was thinking, well, I could import a whole sequence and I could show you this, but I really don't have a moving head that is set up where it's other than this one here. But if you can imagine for a moment, these are the two effects that after you've imported, let's say this is your PPD sequence uh, or anybody's sequence for that matter. All you're going to need to do is apply these effects the entire length of the sequence, and it's going to affect all of your models that happen to be the same. And if they do, then this is your simplest fix that you possibly could have for either your moving heads. Uh, in, in, I mean, if you had if you had all of these moving heads exactly the same, you could copy and paste this simply and put this over top of all of your moving heads effects across all of your uh, To your take stack it one them. step further, what you could do is you could make a... 10 minute long sequence and place these two effects down one time. And then every time you import moving heads, you re-import this like move, you could call it the moving head fixer. And you could drop this same effect on every one of your moving heads, I would assume. And it should that, work. That's that's correct. The only the only caveat to that would be um you would have to put these on the uppermost layer so your import so you would do your sequence import and then you would have to on all of your moving head layers you'd have to insert layer above and then insert another layer so you'd have your two layers perhaps if you needed even more of a fix you might need a third layer so what rob's saying is is that once you once you've determined how many layers your fix is and you put that in your saved sequence, you could import it in and uh, do it quickly and have it, you could have it the length of 10, you know, five minutes and that's going to cover pretty much any song, most songs. And then uh, the other thing you could consider is use, uh, is creating a preset effect. Um, people, many people don't use preset effects, but uh, if you, if you do, you can just click new and you could call this adjust. And that would be your adjust for moving heads. And so then if you wanted to, you could just come down here and you double click and stretch it out and make it match the length of your sequence. So uh, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. Uh, you could, again, like Rob said, you could certainly create a blank sequence that's uh, five minutes long and just import them. So that's uh, definitely an easy way to go about it. Um, I'm going to hit some of the questions here. Uh, in chat, because I haven't been following along too much in chat. Let's see. Um, Rachel asked, is the adjust effect uh, out yet for PC? I'm on Windows right now, Rachel, and it is here in .22. I'm in 2023.22. I hadn't updated at all until we heard about this effect. So this is, uh, you know, I really haven't spent much time sequencing the past few. Uh, well, I have sequenced, but I haven't. Uh, I haven't been sequencing in the new version, so this is really the first time. Um, it is in 22. Um, let's see. 
Rachel says she has a sequence from the Magical that uh, she can't find the DMX effect at all. I hope the adjust effect will work on it. So that that might be that might be that um, depending on on how the moving heads are um, created, how they're they're sequenced. If you're not using the DMX effect, it may or may not work. I I really don't know. the The only way I've ever sequenced a a, a sequence is with the moving heads for moving heads is with the DMX effect personally. Uh, the only thing that I would ever use generally use a, an a regular effect for might be like let's say the on effect. Uh, or the fade down effect, uh, and I would I would use that. So that's one of the things that I might use it on, uh, something like that. So, uh, but we use we use a sub model to do that on. We don't do that on anything else. Uh, Alex said presets, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um, so Alex says, so what are you having Rob do for all the time he spends on figuring out the offset now that we have have the adjust? Well, <laughs> we're never going to have to figure that one out again. But th there's still more to learn on this. Like, uh, like there really isn't much information, if any, uh, on the adjust effect. So this is just something new. This is really, to me, this is really new. I don't, rem I don't even know when new. I don't, rem I don't even know when. Uh, this version of X lights was released. Was that back on the 5th or 6th of December? So um, this is something that, you know, I don't think anybody's really talked about it unless they've uh, run into it or, or they knew about the development of it and being added into X lights. Um, if the pan and tilt are used, wait, if the pan and tilt are set different for each head, would this still work? Um, well, it it's should. It's like for punishment, but yes. You'd have to make a preset or you'd have to tune in each one. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, the, it, your mileage may vary. Uh, again, it all goes back to moving heads are not a pixel and they're not a matrix and they're not a, a mini tree and they're not a they're not a roof outline or icicles or, or a mini uh, snowflake or something. Um, so your mileage will always vary with them and there's no way to know until you go and test it out, but, but you're going to have to go out and do it on your own because not everybody's going to have the answer for this, especially, especially if you don't have moving heads, you're not going to know anything about moving heads. So it's really hard to, it really is hard to answer some of these questions. Um, Alex says Tom uses uh, groups of channels and the on-off effect. No bueno. Um, I, 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 I know he uses. I know he uses AC channels, and we, we've, we've worked with his, his layout before. And I've, I, I generally, I, I, on some of the things like on his moving heads that I've used in in some of our shows because we've done some commercial shows with his uh, magical light show heads. Uh, we always use his model, but. Um, but I converted his model to have the, the sub models here. So I sequenced on the sub models for the, for what is called intensity here, but it's the dimmer channel. So, um, and Rachel says, yes, it's all regular effects, just completely backwards for our lights back backyard dancing, like crazy, nothing out front. Nope. I hear you. <laughs> well, that just sounds like it's a super private light show then. That's all. Yeah, it is. That's a private light show for your eyes only. So um, if you have a look, if, if you're out there in Facebook land, I'm sorry, I haven't followed anybody on Facebook just yet. Um, so let me zip over there real quick and see if anybody has any questions or anything out there for that. Uh, but it, meanwhile, anybody else here in the Zoom room that has any questions about this, go ahead and throw it in chat real quick. Um, but... So real quick, going over, uh, your Pixel store is having his pre-sell on moving heads right now. And if you're a, a Pixel Pro display, uh, club member, uh, if you go to the, your affiliate discounts, you'll see that he gave a little special uh, incentive for you guys being in the club uh, with uh, the the adapters. So if you jump in there, uh, make sure you use your discount that way you're going to check out to buy moving heads over there. Like I said, he does have moving heads over there on sale right now on free sale. Um, so when you jump over there, just make sure you're checking out the affiliate page first. So you're getting all your discounts or whatever you need. Uh, and letting Miner know over at yourpixelstore.com.
So uh, the about the uh, only comment that I see so far uh, is that, let's see, that Michael runs into that all the time. And, and uh, uh, whenever he's doing his moving heads, he runs into that. So um, absolutely. Guys, if you want to uh, join us in the Zoom room, we're going to switch over to do PPD. Um, uh, open mic night. Uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to pop them open and, and add them in chat. We're going to uh, end the live stream now. So a huge thank you all. Uh, again, thank you to Minor. He's he's definitely one of our uh, uh, appreciated affiliates. We have a lot of affiliates we work with. Minor's gone out of his way and done a lot of really cool things. And it's nice to have him do uh, kind of the special on the DMX adapter so that if you want to jump into this, because uh, Rob, what what was it? What, what adapter was it that uh, there's a difference between them for like the cult controllers? Is that right? Yeah, so it's it's just real simple. One is a Cat5 or Ethernet to XLR, and the other one is uh, XLR to just, uh, I guess you just say wire. <clears throat> and then the, the stripped wire you can screw into the Euro plugs for the DMX on the Culps and that. Because like the Culps and uh, the Scott Hansen board, they don't have the, the Cat plug on it they actually just have it where you screw down into the actual terminals you said they have a terminal drops uh on the board where instead of a ethernet drop so there's so you're gonna have to manually add that in okay so yeah just uh just be aware of that know which controller you have so that uh you can take advantage of the sale uh of the special huge thank you to minor and um a huge thank you to you guys uh you know uh, a lot of people a lot of people uh We'll share things with us, and I hope you guys see that whenever uh, we have issues or situations or challenges that people throw uh, in our directions, we kind of – when we when we have an issue that's solved, especially something like this, we want to address it, and we want to make it easier for you guys moving forward. It really can be frustrating to do these moving heads. It real, And I'll be honest, it is – it can be frustrating for me because I'm, there's no way that I have any clue in the world how everything is supposed to work for absolutely everybody. I mean there's there's – tens of thousands of people in the x lights group now and uh, that's incredible and uh, to to know the solution for 10,000 people is is uh is challenging and because it's going to be different for everybody because everybody's going to use different stuff so um keep sharing your challenges uh share your frustrations let us know put your comments in the PPU Facebook group let it uh, because it, it, whenever you do share that and we we see that we can do things like tonight which is kind of you know, literally, he Rob mentioned that last Wednesday. He said, "Well, next week we're going to run this in a webinar," and it was it was good because, uh, you know, hopefully this is something that people will look forward to and say, "Ah, now I know how to fix that," or "Oh, that's something I'm going to go try." I've been fighting this all year. Uh, you know, I can see Rudy wanting to play with this because Rudy always seems to has little things that he wants to fix about his moving heads, and this might be uh, the time that that we can actually say, "Hey, give this a shot, Rudy." So. Uh, guys, that's all from me. Rob, thank you for uh, coming up with a great idea for tonight's class. If you have any questions, put them down below. Again, uh, if you like the video, share the video with other people, because especially if other people are having issues, hopefully this video answers them. And there's more than one form here. You can show them the, the, the basic way that we walked through it and figured it out with what was already existing. And then you can show them the new adjust effect. So guys, that's everything from me. Rob, take it away, guys. Have a good evening. We'll see you soon.